Hello, greetings. Uh, this is me again, Zahra Jawad. Uh, this is on my case, um, life case. Uh, recently, I it's been very unsettling to even make a decision or do something. But then I get angry and uh, that provoked, so that's when I have to do these videos. Most of the time I'm angry and uh, I feel I feel oppressed. Uh, so, you know, would like some help from good people, um, the good people out there. So, have had problems here too right now. Uh, so, yeah, the religion thing, it was very difficult. So if I have, if I keep missing out on something or my points or not completing my points and the way I speak and all this, I'm really sorry I have to explain this, uh, that uh, since childhood I was told that my potential were cut. Uh, so as I grew up, I had problems in life. I was uh, disturbed. So it wasn't showing much on, but it was sometimes showing in uh, with the family, my father and his family and somewhere else. I, I cannot explain this. For example, um, when in school, <coughs> St. Vianney's, I was in, I was weak and this teacher, Christian teacher opted, I mean my mother, no, she opted to come to my house to give me tuitions and uh, then she, I wasn't, I was showing her my dolls, my toys and all. I remember showing her my doll and then uh, she told my mother to send me to her place. So I went to her place and things like that, right? Even in education, my in my childhood suffering. And then she was uh, suddenly transferred to Saudi Arabia. And she didn't have the heart to tell my mother. My mother met her at uh, Kashmir Road, um, a carnival uh, where uh, her, my mother's my mother and her sister had gone. So she came back saying that my this uh, Catholic Christian teacher in Karachi uh, didn't have the heart to tell me. And uh, so uh, I have to tell you that, you know, she is being transferred. So this way, someone after me since childhood, believe it or not, cutting my potential, they cut my potential. Um, and uh, so I have all these impediments. Um, so you can say that that was in my childhood, but uh, even in like Karachi American School, they tried to get me out uh, by putting it on Ms. Desa and my, my relationship uh, as a family friend with her. So in our in Karachi, uh, we had this. It was very common to become family friends with our teachers, right? Uh, I don't know why I had to suffer like this. So I found out another family who was Miss Desa, my Karachi American School teachers, family friends. So. Uh, this has been going on and uh, recently while doing the religious thing again this person I don't want to see his face uh, the person uh, remember who had called me from the game section Facebook the balling uh, balling game section these a uh, group of men had called me now recently he didn't answer back but now they've answered about Iran or something last night when I was doing my religious videos so I've blocked him 
uh, James, uh, God knows what he says. Um, so, Iran, about Iran, right? Iran. Uh, so, I don't know, his name is James uh, something, but uh, his name is a Western, but it seems they're after me. Yeah, at least our country doesn't say death to Iran, like Iran says death to America. You, uh, sounds like they're from United States America, of America. Actually, all war is a balance, oh God, explaining things of killed and all this. So these were the people, are you Kashmiri? Uh, so you know some Kashmiris? with the light hair and all, can do this. No American is going to come like this. And uh, my message, this was like long time ago on Facebook game section. So they were trying to get me. No, America is great. And uh, so I was talking about this religion against this re religion. And I thought maybe, you know, USA kills Muslims. No, no, USA doesn't kill Muslims. Sorry, I was wrong about this. My messages to him, I was like, are you Kashmiri Punjabi bastard? Right? I was very, very angry. Are you a CIA agent? James missed your call. Okay. So they, this guy is from the group who had called me, James Milet or Millet. <coughs> uh... So there are some people in uh, America, you know, Kashmiri Pakistanis, recently who had bothered me on Facebook, Mickey, Malek and all. So you see my behavior, I cannot, uh, if you, I'm already here in a turmoil. So if there are any out there, some good people to help out. Yes, I am. Uh, so my, my, my message to this guy was, sorry, I can't even speak properly about my case. I need an expert, but can't afford one. September 6, 2021. He's answered Thursday, uh, yesterday at 1.56 p.m. They have the gall to answer. So late. <clears throat> and see, making us, as, as, uh, making suspicions. And it's kind of weird. Uh, this thing on me is telling me, has been telling me for the longest time now. See, in Karachi, when I was there, something happened to my mind. <laughs> and. Uh, like the Pakistanis concentrating on America a lot, you know, the superiority of the white, and we are good people, and we are. <clears throat> so recently, uh, Imran Khan appealed to the United Nations for Islamophobia. And I think they've taken the, uh, his appeal. Uh, so what about America phobia, Western phobia, and uh, white superiority phobia, supremacy phobia. No one takes that. Uh, so I feel I've been saying that. Uh, hmm. So my mind, I, why should I think of America, right? But yes, I have a. Um, um, in Karachi American School, I have a case that I wanted to. Actually, uh, someone told me in this condition that when I was in Karachi, that I should go back to that uh, Karachi American School and reopen my case. Say that, please, can you give me my records to see myself instead of you know, indirectly giving it to that Kashmiri doctor who we, we couldn't rely on and all this. So, but that I didn't do because I wasn't well. And I was like, uh, maybe they won't even hear me. 
uh, they never heard me. But they heard my father when he used to go to them, but not me if I went to them. So this family also, my father, they, uh, my father would go to them and talk to them. I don't know what, I don't even trust my father in this. Uh, so uh, all this, um, what is happening, but uh, so this Iran thing they've taken out. I, I actually don't agree to what Khomeini did uh, in, uh, in Karachi. I was like, I'm not going to be a Shia like this, that I will say down on Israel, down on America, death to Israel, death to America. Even like Pakistanis, you know, Kashmiri Shias, no, sorry, like uh, about Kashmir and against India so much. And what else is there? This is very sinister uh, energy. Okay, so I cannot speak properly. So uh, in all this, this message sent, I just ignored it. I, I just because Iran, he's put in capital letters and all. Otherwise, um, I said, just forget it because I'm one-pointed. Uh, because you see, you can't catch these people. They could be Kashmiri origin. They could be Pakistani origin in America, trying to create this thing against America and uh, a very terrible energy. Like, you know, America had this distance uh, mind control. I don't know where I might, uh, you, I might not be able to convince you. So, no, the Pakistanis are the worst I've ever met in my life. Um, Pakistanis are the worst Muslims uh, ever met. So, and now I know that in Karachi American School, it must have been from my father's family, someone. Or someone in Pakistan, jealous, a lot of jealousy in Pakistan, envy and a lot of corruption also. Uh, so everything, every evil I feel has started from Pakistan. So America, be careful. Now I've changed and so this must be out of jealousy or something. James Milet, first you come and call me year two, 2021. You agree with the group. And now you're uh, recently giving me this. Uh, so a anyways, a reminder, sending me a message on Facebook, inbox. Uh, anyways, a reminder. This is what uh, Pakistanis have done to me. and my father's family. So cutting my potential and having dizziness. Okay, I have dizziness when I'm sitting down on my bed or on the sofa or somewhere. But the moment I get up, this dizziness goes, thank God. It comes and goes, but when I'm standing or doing something, it doesn't come at that time. Now it's this, has some strange thing going on. So anyways, I have appealed to people about my case. Uh, if, uh, so I, there was so much to say and I can't say this uh, properly. It's my case, just a minute. Hello, yeah, some people I cannot believe. You come harassing the girl who is a woman who is playing a game on her own on Facebook, giving her a call from the Facebook messenger in a, uh, with a group of men, Pakistani also, or, you know, the Eastern, yeah, there were Pakistanis, 
Parveen, Praveen, Parveen something. And now you have the call after so long to send it. This seems to be like a Kashmiri Muslim, something Pakistani Punjabi. Conspiracy theory. It's not a theory. It's what I'm showing you here. What has come. But I cannot uh, show you it's on Facebook. Uh, you can. I haven't yet even. Uh, I didn't have time to even think about this yesterday. I just blocked the messenger of his. So you won't be able to send me any more messages. And I went on with my videos on Islam and the truth. And uh, so, look, if you, if here, I cannot behave myself, right? Uh, I mean, this, I get nervous breakdown and I'll shout and I'll scream. And then <coughs> my head is so cracked, I feel so cracked up that I'm going to say bad words. Now, I've been warning people that this is my condition. <coughs> Please uh, understand in all this and they don't understand. So what is, so there will be these bad rotten people are covert narcissists, tsunami, you can't do anything, it's these rich, also they are the ones who can go on, you know, <coughs> you cannot imagine, <coughs> they can go on, ill feelings, bad, so who's going, they can actually get up and go on, and they're talking about Iran, this guy. I don't even know who he is. Uh, maybe it's a fake American. He claims to be, you know, the uh, Pakistani did the Bosnia war, got that done. Army or CIA, what's uh, the S I S I of Pakistan? like Dr. Farosi Ahmad, availed the opportunity. She availed it against us. I don't know. So family members, uh, global family, we have this. So Anita Murjani had made and another American for these people, you know, empaths who fall back because these covert narcissists are like sharks. Have you seen Jaws? So in short, uh, they can eat you up. Uh, so we want to empower. They want it, they, I realized. So I'm much grateful to them. Uh, I don't know how to go, <laughs> you know, like, everyone, like, a show, and it's going to take time. Recently, I've shown Nikki Malik's uh, thing. Uh, so every case, every man who comes and bothers me or harasses me. Um, so I cannot uh, take everyone because then my energy is even more depleted for a week or so. I can't even prepare my food or even want to, like, God knows, it's really weird, you know, over exhaustion. I can't have my food. So um, all I can do is appeal to uh, make this a better world, uh, not to hurt people, but you can't uh, appeal to covert narcissists. They're shameless, cruel people. So I don't know what to do. What else to do about this, but send a message out uh, that if there is someone who can help, um, Thinking of myself also, like if I was, you know, India, after uh, having, uh, no, contemplated on Indian, um, this ancient uh, wisdom of India, spirituality and all, uh, that as scientists, you know, when they take the, they find out what is the sun, how to use but uh, they actually, in ancient times, they used to worship 
they used to honor the sun for what it is. Now we have, sorry to say this, scientists who coldly, cruelly, I mean in a cold, not cruel, uh, they're not cruel people, but surprisingly this whole thing has gone against those people who actually felt from the heart honor, you know, the sun is giving us rays and they worship that. Now it's in the, no, no, I am sir. It's so sarcastic, I become cynic, uh, this cynical. No, it is uh, like, uh, you know, those people who have worshipped the sun, but uh, just an example I'm giving you, like I was thinking, the sun, you see, we need D3. Now, uh, medical science has created these vitamins where we have to take it, otherwise our bones are hurting like anything. But these, uh, see, D3, and we just need to go out and get some sun for 10 minutes, early morning, uh, sunrise time. And, uh, you know, they say, do take that sun rays until before 10 o'clock, it's very good or like that. That's the best time. These ancient people, they knew what to do. They honored uh, the soil. They honored everything. What they got from earth, they honored the earth. And they are being left behind like this. We're even having ex-Muslim youngsters coming, atheists. Huh? who make fun of these ancient wisdom and uh, this thing. Now you want the fast life, you want everything quick, instant coffee and all this. <clears throat> you want a burger. So, fast food. And you want to say these Indians, these pagans, uh, this is all rubbish. I'm surprised at these ex-Muslim atheists who say these things against ancient wisdoms and spirituality. So I don't know what they really like not to worship the sun because oh in their in their uh, Smirti this that nonsense is given this and they will look at it who has uh, as if uh, the, okay, the uh, Smirti, this uh, Manu Smirti, or, yeah, many Indians are practicing it like, you know, it is an obligation on you, like you have to practice the Quran and all this. Uh, Islam, uh, and no, like you have to take the Quran, uh, and you can't go against one principle of what the Quran, the command of Allah, and this and that. It's not like that. So such a weird thing that life has ill ill feeling people are going up and with this azad ground i have been you know these kind of people coming on youtube youtubers ex muslims radha rani ek tumara neet chalega what the nonsense and there's no one, like, uh, you know, he's a Gauramji dystopia to reason. These people are going on and they, I can't even, uh, it was nice of dystopia to reason, Gauramji to say whatever. <laughs> but is it because uh, they respect the lady or are you superficially, artificially? doing this when you you know you've got this one as your buddy right on your channel maybe you are related to my you are friends with my enemy i don't know because i did a kind of sense somewhere 
that there was this uh, my father someone's voice but then it changed as I was my ears uh, at a dystopia to reason so excuse me this uh, bad habit uh, this uh, Kashmiri this uh, my father's worker no? servant oh bad word all of a sudden there it's like s of a sorry yeah, yeah but uh, i mean the words don't count but their actions they have destroyed people and children that's important see if uh, the bad word what's the use of uh, calling them bad words s of a you know b <coughs> or something like that it's not my way but anyways the word has come and the compulsion to say it I'm struggling <coughs> this is uh, what I've been saying so so on one hand I'm very like for example on one hand I'm very grateful uh, that at least uh, <coughs> In Emirates, uh, they take care financially of people who really are genuinely not well. I would not want to be not well because I know how the world can tear you apart and misuse you. Uh, if you don't have money and all this, right? So, And then, you know, these men also coming when they see your case uh, anyways, they used to come. In, in Pakistan, it doesn't matter whether they see your case. Maybe your father is a criminal. Maybe my father behind, I don't know. that. But uh, they do it to anyone and everyone. Veena Ayat, they gang raped and God knows. They sent my teacher a long time ago, transferred her to Saudi Arabia. She, I think she was the only daughter there with her mother. I didn't see any any other when I used to go to her place for tuitions when I was young. Before going to London, that was like 1974, somewhere. They transferred her to Saudi Arabia and all this. Bedardi, they are ruthless people, Pakistanis. <coughs> so and uh, shameless please help god so i want to bring some like in mumbai there's this uh, security police you know if someone harasses someone cyber crimes also see i'm not feeling well and i say it how how much can i say please help me this is why long time ago we couldn't talk properly so, you know, you would think we're screaming at each other, angry at each other, but we were not angry. <coughs> Terrible oppression done. Uh, this was told to me by, in London by this lady uh, against, you know, brothers, sisters, siblings, my mother, my mother and her children. Not my father, but... Uh, my mother and her children, us. Uh, so we had this uh, problem of communication, and living in harmony and love. <coughs> uh, so God knows what's on us. Someone did tell me, oh, it's my grandmother. Uh, that uh, You see, if you want to help someone, see my grandmother, my father's side, Terrible lady, terrible, wicked, right? Now, there was someone who had told me a secret about the Sajwani family, but cousins of my father, right? If you want to help someone, right, you can do it in such a way, not by just sending money once in a blue moon and, you know, like that, sending 2,000 dirhams and just forget about these people. No, no. You know, there's uh, someone I knew, 
told me that uh, my uh, uncle Ham Hamdan Sajwani, my gr grand uncle, his uh, wife late now. So I think Sakon Hamdan Sajwani. What she was doing was when I asked someone, like, do, do you have money? Like, now that, you know, you've, uh, you've left your brother's, uh, this thing, uh, service house where you did service for the rest of you, uh, for most of your life. So she told me that, uh, you see how the uh, Hamdan Sajwani, was helping this lady, my relative. In by now, those who know, <coughs> who know us, know who I am talking about. <coughs> Many. When you want to help them, oh my God! I'm uh, sorry. Say, give me a minute, please. Yeah. So um, okay, I'll say it like this. She used to make exquisite pick pickles all kinds and we never like she was always available for us in the daytime she used to cook exquisite food perfect all kinds uh, that we from the eastern she learned some irani dishes you know and sweet dishes exquisite very clean exquisite so she never sold that because her brother never allowed her. Uh, but uh, Hamdan Sajwani, uh, later on, uh, she told me not to tell anyone. I guess now I have to come out with it. Uh, that they used to send cloth material from Dubai to her. And she was the medium. All she had to do, perhaps, I never saw her going house to house in Karadar, selling, not even coming to us and selling the material, like some Patans and Afghanis do. They go door to door. So maybe what she had to do was go to the shop in, like a, a relic, a community member, and his uh, Bumuni, her friend, his son's shop, give the material there. And then, you know, whatever is. So she would, uh, the Hamdan family, for example, would give her commission for this. And uh, so when you want to help someone, you give them the bait, everything. And that was really great of them. But you see, this family, my father's family, if you want to ruin someone, then uh, you don't even buy any bonds or anything, shares for this, your own daughter, you know? So you leave her lifeless. You take all the blood, squeeze all the blood and life out of her. So this is uh, this cruel, from the cruel mother, uh, this one, Fatma, Ulama Sen, Sajwani, my father's mother, right? Even her sons and uh, some of her, I mean her children, were very jealous and some, so, you know, us being in Karachi American school, jealousy against my mother and her children so I could see it and I thought so if you don't want to help someone you can squeeze the blood and so what I'm trying to say is that Hamdan family Hamdan Sajwani late Hamdan Sajwani God bless their souls I mean See, so uh, there are people out there who will take the oper avail the opportunity shamelessly. 
and I've brought my case out, so I don't know how. So I could have, uh, you know, my uh, my father could have let me get make life easy, right? Instead of saying, "Oh, we're so scared," you know, we will spoil you if we gave you so easily something. <clears throat> this lady, she uh, she worked. She was a service lady without money. Uh, her life. She used to wake up early morning, very early. I remember she, when she was at our place, after having made tea and this and that for my aunt and me, our brother's uh, daughter, she was sitting in the big room in the, near the door on the floor. My eye just opened when I was going to St. Vianney's and my aunt was going to St. Joseph's College. And they're both uh, very close to each other, uh, very, very close. So she would, you know, my aunt had uh, exams uh, to study. She would wake up like before even it was uh, before, just before sunrise, like it would be daylight. Three in the morning, I don't know, four in the morning, five in the morning, like that. And then in the end, Hamdan family helped her. Uh, so, he was going to say that, oh, why give Mimi so easily and all this nonsense? Right? What a thing. Who are you to judge? Okay, so there are people saying like, you know, uh, you will spoil. For example, there was this interview with His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktou. And uh, wouldn't you spoil your Emiratis, right? Some European American was asking him. Okay, now uh, you see, um, you have to see where we have come from. Um, generally, the thing is that Emiratis uh, are laid back; they don't want to work, and all this. But it's our parents actually who have kept the ladies, girls, females, at home. So this may be a, a different thing, but my aunt, my grand aunt, was, it was a different case. Uh, but uh, I think that, you know, uh, our culture is different here. Uh, we've been family people, okay? We've been spoiled to a, a certain extent. And the ladies, they really cannot uh, go out like the men can, right? And work like the men. Because it's been a long time. For example, even for the good Muslims, uh, it will take time for me to, to leave my religion completely. Like I want to burn every bridge, see how this person has actually exploited. I still have this amount of shock in me. Because it's been a uh, how, in what ways, Prophet Muhammad and all this did what I can't, uh, I can't express myself right now. There's uh, some background uh, sound also. Um, so you can't blame the Emiratis also. Uh, they've been working and it's our culture like that, that made us, if, uh, you know, lazy or spoiled right uh, since childhood like for example i've been my mother has been giving me money and i was in london shopping shopping um i developed this habit of shopping going out i, I so this is my bad weakness right now i realized this long time ago when my father 
said he had lost some money. Uh, I can't uh, shop like Lady Diana anymore, right? A uh, later Lady Diana. Or, uh, I used to think that like the Queen anymore. But I used to like because my father made me want to shop <coughs> great clothes, dresses, this, uh, and then it went on like this. So you can't blame <coughs> your people. So, before we, and here, before we blame the Emiratis, I guess, we have to blame ourselves. The sheikhs have to blame themselves for keeping their daughters inside and the wives in Parda uh, veiled. So there were Emiratis a uh, long time ago working in the sun, heat, sand. It's such a rough ancient times. So the thing is that I don't know. I don't think we can blame the Emiratis. First blame yourselves. <coughs> so the rich Blame yourselves. Fathers, blame yourselves. And then you can also see, look at this religion, what it has done. So, that's it. Thank you. I will continue later.